Hello Virgo! Welcome to your February 2018 reading. Thanks so much for being here. I'm so excited for this month. For me, as a Libra Ascendant, Aquarius energy is all about creation, all about creativity, all about dating and fun. And I am excited to kind of lean into that. So I'm like really amped up this month. <laughs> and I want you guys to be aware that you have a presence around you, whether they're contacting you or not. Someone is watching you and they are not super happy that you're moving on. Okay, now you may or may not hear from them, although I think a lot of you will hear from them, even if it's just like a little, hey, text or something like that, right? You are gonna hear from them. And we have Venus, Sun, and Mercury moving into your sixth house, which is your naturally ruled house, right, in Aquarius. And um, with Venus in that part of the sky, even though it's associated with Aquarius, which is like an air sign, and you know, it's kind of a tough match for Virgo a lot of times, intellectually, it's like the best match, okay? Virgo and Aquarius really like totally get one another on an intellectual level. Um, but there is that attractiveness because it is your part of the sky, and we've got Venus there. And so people are going to be looking at you. You do have magnetism about you. It's like the dark horse kind of magnetism though. It's like not like Leo like I just did where it's in their seventh house and they're like, oh, I'm amazing. And it's all this like showiness. It's very quiet and it's very soft and it's very like subdued. But I think you're gonna feel a lot of those like rays, right? A lot of those vibrations coming towards you and from one, like likely one specific person and they are going to try to hold you back. So there's no need for you to really be tempted because I think you're 100% on the right track. I think your life is going in a wonderful direction. I think you're feeling good. I think you're feeling for the very first time in a long time, like you've got this under control. And that's one thing Virgo loves is to have things, you know, under control and there's no problems and things are like like operating like a machine and you know it's efficient right you're the sign of efficiency and we've got Saturn in a very efficient part of the sky so you know I think that there's a lot of positive progress that has been made and there's no reason to revert back um, there's no need to be curious I don't really think that it's going to be a long-lasting thing so just um, just keep going Okay, now I am doing comprehensive this month. So if you've watched any of my other signs, you'll, you'll know I've talked about it. And comprehensive readings are really going to like add so much more information to the spreads that I have here on YouTube. They are free, so you're gonna have to go down to my um, website link in the description box down below. They are free this month. Um, and I'm gonna be introducing a lot of new things um, on my site. So stay tuned for that over the course of the next three to four weeks because I kind of slowly and softly roll it out. Um, I'm very excited about it. And uh, I hope to bring you guys some value, <sighs> you know, some value, and some things to help you live your life in a more educated way so that you're not so, you know, dependent on the swing of the pendulum, which I talk about all the time, right? The, the, the rhythm of the universe, right? Where you can kind of be more intelligent about about life so i hope you guys will join me there thank you guys so much and i will talk to you soon bye, -bye. hello virgo welcome to february 2018 let's go ahead and get started we had six of swords pop out while i was shuffling getting ready for the reading so six of swords is a transitory transitory place moving from point a to point b it's also a symbol of spiritual evolution and taking the lessons learned from where it is you're coming from to where you're going. The lessons that you've learned, they always come with you. You know, like once you've learned something, you cannot unlearn it. And with the past years that we've had, you know, those are going to start getting put to good use with creation, with money, with dating, any other area of your life, with health, everything. Um, and it's going to catapult you into a whole new realm. 
a new paradise, I believe. Um, a paradise where whatever you set your mind to can and will be accomplished, you know, and you don't have a lot of adversarial energies attacking you right now. Be sure to lean into this flow. Be sure to lean into this groove because it's not always going to stay that way, you know? And so we need to take advantage of the smooth transitions while we have them because it'll prepare us for the amazing things to come in and it will prepare us for the tough stuff to come in too. You know, life is all about cycles and right now we're on an upswing and that's great, but you have to take advantage of it, right? Like you have to start investing when the market is low. Buy low, sell high. You've, you're purchasing low right now. And as the market goes up, as your life goes up, as circumstances go up, you, you're going to become wealthy because of those things. You know, wealthy maybe financially for a lot of you, maybe wealthy in terms of love and family, okay? In friends. Mm, this one came out for Leo too. Mm, I don't see it as you guys. I see your back turning on this person. Card of Sagittarius could be another fire sign, Leo Aries, or anyone who has. Uh, I hate to say it because this is not a bad person. Totally not a bad person, but they don't meld well with Virgo energy. This person is super fun, really outgoing, loves to talk, loves to philosophize, like loves to <sighs> open their minds and explore and travel and all these things. But they do approach life very differently. And it's possible this was a person that was responsible for a heartbreak in the past, was responsible for some kind of failure, or responsible for really spiraling you into this transformation that we've all been going through, right? And you're turning your back. Like, the lessons that have been learned are because of this person. The lessons that have been learned that you are now grateful for, hopefully, are because of them. But I think you're done with them. You know, you're done with that. And I think that you are at that place where you're just kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm ready for something more solid. Because this is not a solid person. You know, this is someone that is slippery. I call them slippery. <laughs> Difficult to, to grab onto, especially in love, okay? So let's keep going. What else? What else is going on for you, Virgo? Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. What is going on? Okay. And Four of Swords. Reversed. Telling me... A separation is needed, but maybe it's not being taken. This is a card of meditation, a card of seeing things objectively, taking a nap, like an actual nap, um, or just a nap from life, you know, just a little time out, checking yourself out for a minute and just kind of getting your head on straight. But those thoughts are a bit skewed when it's reversed. And there is an issue with objectivity and maybe subjectivity kind of creeps in a little bit. Um, opinions start kind of creeping in. It's important for you to really see things for what, what they actually are or what they actually were. Swords are not subjective, right? They are harsh, they are truthful, they are honest. And that's it. So when we start convoluting the past with hope of the future or hope of change or whatever, this is someone that's going to need to prove before you can believe. 
So don't start believing before they prove it, right? They need to prove that they've turned around, that you need to, whatever. If, if they come back, they're obviously present in your life right now. They are causing you some unrest. I'm getting nervous. Like I'm listening, I'm talking, I'm listening to myself talk and I'm like getting nervous. And I think some of you, you're thinking about whoever this person is and you're like, oh, I hope they don't come back. I hope they don't. Because I maybe you don't trust yourself. You know, you don't trust yourself to be fully, um, like, I just lost my train of thought. And maybe that's what this is even about, right? Like, you're so sure of yourself, but then when it comes to them, like, you're not sure. And they just, like, they get to you. And they affect you in certain ways. Um, they're going to, they've got a lot to show you before you can start believing in them again. Before you can start being optimistic about them again. Okay? They've got a lot to prove to you. Words are not enough. Getting these two cards. Well, you are hearing from someone for sure. Someone is coming. Um, this could also be you. I feel that there's honesty here. This is often an offering of some kind. I often see this as a peace offering. Right? Like, maybe an apology of some kind. Although normally I see that with the Page of Cups. But maybe an apology of some kind. Um, but... I, I don't know that this person is really going to be offering you anything that is substantial. Like, it's a little bit, it's a page level, not a king level of what they're offering. It's just like, like they're just kind of maybe testing the waters a little bit, maybe. But they are a good person, you know? I'm not saying they're not, uh, but I am saying... They might not be good for you. Take this with a grain of salt. With the um, comprehensive reading that I'm doing, I will be clarifying these. Okay, so you'll, you'll get a lot more information with those. Those will be on my website. The information's below if you want to join me there. Like, see, how can you have such contradictory ones, like, <laughs> so close together? Um, like you're moving forward, you've learned the lessons, but yet somehow with this person, like there's a blindness with them and there's a soft spot there. Maybe they're an Achilles heel, you know, it's just that weakness. You, you feel that chemistry, you feel that connection, you feel that love and, and that hope of what they could be, but don't be naive. There is naivete and innocence with this page of coins. That's why I'm like, it is you, right? There is naivete here. Don't be naive. Don't repeat the same mistakes. I'm not saying don't give anyone a second chance because we have all been going through a lot the past couple years, but this person really, really needs to prove to you what they're truly capable of. And they need to prove to you why they want you in their lives. You know, there's no room for blind faith here. Excuse me. No room for blind faith. So don't be blind. I know this person makes you f like, uh, it makes you think things that you wouldn't otherwise think if this was like a friend of yours going through the same situation. Like if you, if what is happening to you is happening to a friend, you would look at your friend and be like, don't be stupid. What are you doing? What are you thinking? In that very beautiful Virgo critical way, right? But nice, you know? But we, you know, you say that to your friend. The guy is, or the person, guy or girl, the person is using you. They are just, you're just convenient or whatever it is. But when it comes to yourself, it can be really, really hard to see that. And I think that there's something there. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Okay. 
Okay, five of swords, sword, 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 sword. So your mind will be stimulated this month. You are going to be challenged this month for sure. But see, as you head into the glassy horizon, you are heading from the rough waters, which is the blind spot, the choice to not see, moving into this release. And I often see the Five of Swords reversed as breaking free from toxic cycles, breaking free from um, the bad habits and the bad behaviors, which are so closely linked to this person. I don't really believe they've changed that much. I don't believe they've changed enough. There are other people that are more better suited to be your friends, to be your boyfriends, girlfriends, you know, to be your counterparts, whatever. There are better people better suited for that position, okay? Give a gift to yourself the gift of freedom, you know, and liberation from something that has caused you so much stress and anxiety and suffocation, feelings of suffocation. This I often see as someone who feels like they're at war with themselves. Like, you know you shouldn't, you shouldn't participate in it, you shouldn't do it, you shouldn't continue to entertain the idea, and yet you do, and then you get mad at yourself for doing it, and it's this vicious circle. And here you are breaking that circle, breaking that cycle. Five of Swords. Okay, so do yourself a favor. Give yourself a gift. A gift of freedom. That is within your power to do. Gratitude is always the first step. Gratitude and faith for what you go through into where you're going. See, Ten of Pentacles. Where you're going is to the top. Where you are going is to wealth and prosperity. This is over on the glassy horizon. This is your paradise. And here there is love, there is warmth and acceptance, there is joy and celebration. There is comfort here. And there's a, a group of people that, that really, really love you because you can feel very isolated when you're here. Even if you have people around you, you feel very isolated. So why is someone that doesn't really have a very strong foothold in your life, doesn't want a strong foothold in your life, why is it that they are causing this to separate you from all of this? It's no need, it's not necessary. But at the same time, if we look at the position of the swords, it is because of this, as it trickles down through you, that you are led to this. So it couldn't have been any other way, guys. I know people hate that when I say that. It's like, that's such a cop-out, you know? But couldn't have been in any other way. <laughs> you had to deal with that in order to know what this even is. You have to have the shadow in order to understand the light. Here's the light, here's the shadow. You have to have both. The shadow leads to light, okay? Five of Pentacles. I'm worried about your fear. The fear that you may have regarding... Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. The fear you have regarding your future. Because this is, again, another card of isolation. Um, another card of even rejection and, and feeling left out in the cold and, and feeling like you're underappreciated and 
and not special. And I will tell you one thing, because Virgo, you have Leo in the 12th house. And, and Virgo, you know, you have a very, very strong need and desire to be recognized for being special, to be recognized for being one of a kind. And when people don't give you that credit and you feel unspecial or you feel regular, like you're just on a list, um, you tend to fade away into the background. You tend to fall away. People love you. People want to see you. They, they enjoy having you in their presence. It is noticed when a Virgo is not there. Um, even though you are a very soft energy, you are very quiet, you are very subtle, you have the presence of the lion. Okay, so don't underestimate yourself. You know, don't underestimate how needed you are. Um, it's not even that people need you in terms of they're needy, but how needed you are in the world and how needed you are with your family. And so when you pull back and you reject the goodness in, you, in life, it's, it can be very, very hurtful. And to be honest, like what I'm saying here is I'm looking at winter and I'm looking at summer, which Virgo is responsible for. You know, Virgo is responsible for winter. I don't know if you guys know the story. I'll tell it quickly. You know, Demeter, goddess of Earth, or Gaia in um, Greek mythology, or Roman mythology, I'm sorry. Um, Demeter had a daughter, Persephone, who was so beautiful. Demeter was responsible for ensuring that the land was, was plush and had nourishment to feed all the people on the world, on the Earth. And Hades, god of the underworld, saw Persephone and fell madly in love with her. And one day when Persephone was out in the fields, he opened up the earth and swallowed Persephone and, and stole her, kidnapped her. And Demeter, after f realizing that her daughter wasn't coming home, she scoured the earth. She asked everyone. She went up to Mount Olympus, where is my daughter? Where is my daughter? Where is my daughter? And no one would tell her or no one knew where Persephone was. And so eventually she said, okay, well, if you guys aren't going to tell me and you're not willing to help me, then I'm not going to help you. And so she froze the, the earth. Well, Persephone in the meantime knew while she's down in the underworld that if she were to eat the food, then she would be married to Hades and, and she could never ever leave. So she just, you know, refrained from eating for, for many, 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 many months. And eventually Zeus had to step in. Um, actually, let me go back to Persephone not eating because after a certain point in time, you know, she was confronted and given the opportunity, opportunity to eat some pomegranate seeds. And she said, no, you know, I really can't because I, I, I don't want to stay here. And I forget who she was talking to. Um, but the person said, you know, no one's watching. I won't tell anyone. I know you're starving. You need to eat something. And she eat, she ate six pomegranate seeds. So later on, um, Zeus finally had to step in. Um, he went to Hades and said, hey, you know, you really need to let Persephone go. Demeter is creating havoc on the world. The world, people are starving. You have to give... Persephone back. We can't have this because without the mortals, we aren't really gods, you know? And um, so Hades agreed finally and said, I'll give her back, but she's got to come back one month per pomegranate seed. She needs to be with me for six months and then I'll let her go for six months. So during the six months that she's gone, we have winter during the six months where she's back with her mother, Demeter, we have summer. And I feel like there's... I'm sorry I went into that whole big thing, but that's the story behind Virgo, and that's the story behind this icy nature of Virgo. And I feel like you've got this very summer-winter thing going on with your personality here, but there's no need for you to be upset, okay? Um, 
I know that was like a huge, big, long thing. I hope you guys don't mind. But, you know, there's this <sighs> coldness that's associated with this person. And they come in and they mess up your world and they confuse you and they make you feel like reverting backwards. And then they want you to, you know, like, look at me, look at me, please pay attention to me. And But you're like, no, I can't because I, I, I want to make progress in my life. I have so much to be grateful for. And I know if I go backwards, then I'm just going to like, ugh. And so it might put you in a little bit of a dark spot only if you let it. Um, but please, in the process, don't forget, you don't need to make winter of your world, right? They call us the ice queens. That's why they call us the ice queens, right? Especially in Virgo females. Um, we can ice people out so well and so quickly. And when one person affects us, we allow that to affect everyone else. We can get very harsh, very cold, very cruel. Um, and, and you don't need to create that environment in your life. Um, and I feel like that's a, going to be a tendency for you this month where something doesn't work out and, and it gets, you know, ugh, you turn into the angry Demeter that is like, fine, if you're not going to do this, then I'm just going to completely shut everybody off and everyone gets affected. You are responsible for the nourishment and care of the world, okay? It's no small feat. Um, every sign is responsible for something that is so big, and that's yours, okay? And we have the moon coming out last. And the moon is a little deception with all the swords here, you know, so be careful. Be careful of what this person is telling you. And again, I'll pull more for the comprehensive. So... And it is about illusions and idealism and lack of truth. Uh, but I think you know your truth, Virgo. You know your truth. You know what you need to do. You know what you need to say. And you know what progress needs to be made. All right? Um, stay warm. I'm going to pull out a few more. We've got this one. Ah, card of Virgo. Okay. Wheel of Good Fortune. The Seven of Wands. Yes. I will, I do feel that this person's entry will feel a little bit antagonistic right? Like, and then everyone's going to tell you, you know, and God, Virgo, we can be so stubborn too, right? Like you can't really tell a Virgo what to do. You're really, we're just going to do what we want. You know, we kind of sometimes need to learn the hard way, but I think that this is like people's opinions. Don't you dare, don't trust them. Don't pay attention. Don't pay them any mind. Don't let them back into your life. Yada, yada, yada. But look, Good fortune is coming for you. This is a card of good luck. And I do feel, Virgo, that you are on a very steady upward course. You are moving upwards. You're spiraling upwards. And, and there's nothing but beautiful things for you at the top. You have to fight these things in order to get there, but it's always worth fighting for. You know, you have to fight through the stuff. You have to be strong and courageous. And sometimes you do have to get in precarious situations, but you can and you will and you will succeed. Okay, so stay strong. Now, I'm going to leave you there. I hope you guys will join me on my website. The link will be down below in the description um, for the extended where I'll go over this, more about this person, more about this and the moon and even maybe more about the Eight of Swords and the Seven of Wands as well. So hopefully I will see you guys there. Thank you guys so much. Talk to you soon.